First of all, let me wish you a loving, caring, healthy, musical and successful 2020. And I want to thank you for the support in 2019. And I hope that you will continue supporting this channel in 2020. This video is about saving RAM usage on limited systems. We all want to write music on different places in the world and some of us really have a nomad style. So we are working on laptops and sometimes a laptop is not powerful enough to use it as a sketching or writing tool for music because a lot of the orchestral libraries, mainly orchestral libraries, are really demanding on RAM usage. So how can we still write and sketch music in a smooth workflow with limited systems with let's say 8, 16 gigabytes of RAM or maybe 4 gigabytes of RAM. So in this video I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I have used cause the music track Floating Balloons, I have written that on my limited system, a MacBook Pro with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. So what tips and tricks can I give you to get that smooth workflow on a limited system? Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. I'm a Dutch composer and on my channel you can listen to my music and watch videos about how to write music, orchestral music for film and video. So if you want to get better in that, in orchestration, in creating more realistic orchestral mockups, then start now by subscribing and clicking that little bell. So we're inside the template of Floating Balloons, the orchestral music track, which I also have shared the project files, this MIDI mockup with my patrons on Patreon. So if you are interested in getting this MIDI mockup, go to Patreon, become a patron, and you will have access to this MIDI mockup. Let's have a look at it. And this is tip trick number one. I needed to use all the tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you because I wrote this music track on my limited MacBook Pro with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. So keep that in mind. Well, let's start with tip trick number one. And I'm going to demonstrate that by looking at the oboe staccato. The oboe staccato, the patch that I used for that is this one, the oboe solo short staccato with a usage of 63 megabytes of RAM. What I want to say is this. I also could have load in the patch the oboe solo, which contains a lot of more articulations. Let me demonstrate that. I could have used this one, the patch oboe solo, which contains the legato, the tenuto, the staccato, uh, the longs, etc. But this patch uses 267 megabytes of RAM. That's a lot when you look at the oboe solo staccato patch, which is 200 megabytes of RAM less. Because I only wanted to use this one. So the first tip and trick is when you have the possibility to load in a patch with a specific articulation that you want to use in your composition, just use that specific articulation. In my case, I just wanted to use this one, the short staccato. And then we drop from 267 to 63 megabytes of RAM usage. All right, that's tip, tip number one. Another tip. And let me demonstrate that too with the oboe staccato. The oboe staccato uh, only plays a couple of notes. And let, have, let us have a look at that. He only plays this, these notes, right? That is not a lot. What you can do is this. And let me solo it and let me put it back on the screen. We are going to play the last four bars. And before I do that, I will set the reset markers and let me play the four bars of the oboe. What we are going to do when those four bars have been played 
is we are going to update the sample pool. And keep in mind, we started with the general patch of the oboe with 267 megabytes of RAM. We loaded in the short staccato patch, the specific articulation, and it dropped down to 63. We now recorded the last four bars with the reset markers, and we are going to do now the update sample pool, and it drops down to 5.7 megabytes of RAM usage. So we drop down from 267 to 5.7 megabytes of RAM. That's more than 260 megabytes of RAM usage drop down. That's massive, right? And that's really important when you are working on a limited system. So first, load in a specific articulation when it is available and when you have the possibility to load that in. Second, you can reset the markers update the sample pool and you will only load in the different notes, the notes that you are using in your composition, which gets another massive drop down of RAM usage. Tip number three. And again, let me demonstrate by the oboe uh, staccato. And what I could have done is I also could have perched all the samples, right? So then it drops down to zero. And then when I play, it only gets in the samples that we need to, uh, that we need in our composition, right? So that is kind of the same of the reset markers and uh, update the sample pool. You could also have used purge all samples. Right, that's tip number three. All right, let's continue with the last tip. And let me demonstrate that by looking at these ones below, the Chamber Strings Ensemble patches, which I've used. And I've used them for the different instruments, for, for the violins, the violas, and the cello and the basses. And I didn't combine them in one single track, no, I made different tracks because I wanted to uh, manipulate and mix them separately. But these are uh, ensemble patches and ensemble patches are mainly really big patches using, using a lot of RAM. All right, let's have a look at this one, the ensemble patches. And as you can see that all the different articulations are in the ensemble patches. Now, the RAM usage of 113 megabytes of RAM isn't that much, but I applied a trick to this to, to save up a lot of RAM. And mainly all big libraries give this possibility and every library is different in this, um, but I'm going to show you by looking at Spitfire Chomper strings, how you can do this. So when you load up this ensemble patch, you can go to this screen. And what I've done is I unchecked all the articulation that I didn't want to use on this specific track. So when I when you load when you load this ensemble patch in, all these articulations are um, active normally. And then you will see that you are using 830 megabytes of RAM, 0.83 gigabytes of RAM for this patch only. That is a lot of RAM. When you are working on a limited system, like I was on my MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM, and I loaded in one, two, three, four, five, five patches of these. So that alone were four gigabytes of RAM if I haven't applied this trick and I only wanted to use the pizzicato. So I unchecked all the other articulations, giving me a drop down of RAM usage to 113 megabytes of RAM. That's 700 megabytes of RAM less usage of RAM. So those were the four tricks that I wanted to give you to get a massive drop down 
of RAM usage on limited systems. So let me recapitulate this. One, when you have the possibility to load in a specific articulation of an instrument, use that, because that will save up a lot of RAM in uh, relatively to the general instrument patch with all the articulations in it. Secondly, when you are using instruments with some sort of the same notes, repetitive notes, then you can reset the markers, then play the uh, bars with the notes in it and update the sample pool and you will get another massive drop down of the RAM usage. Tip number three, and that is uh, some sort of the same as the second one, you can purge all the samples and then they will drop down to zero RAM usage. And then when you play the song, uh, all the samples that you need for your composition will get loaded in and that will save you a lot of RAM usage too. And the last tip, tip number four is when you are using ensemble patches or general patches and you only need some specific articulations, then untick the articulations that you don't want to use to save up RAM. And most libraries, big libraries, give you that possibility. So when you're on a limited system, I hope that these tips and tricks will help you out and give you the possibility to compose music, orchestral music, on your more limited system, wherever you are on the world. And that music tracks like these one, Floating Balloons, will be possible for you to create on the system with less RAM. So get that smoother workflow, apply these tips and tricks, and I will see you next Thursday with another video.